I did the church in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. And it reads, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before it that we should walk. that God wants to achieve through 
through your presence in the church. Our job is to try, to try and seek that purpose so that God can manifest this supernatural power through us if we lift that mandate. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses number 10, the Bible says we are God's workmanship. That means we are God's created nature creatures. And the Bible continues to say that we have been created, not just been created, but we have been created in Jesus Christ so that we may do good. The good things that God has prepared for us beforehand. It means that you and I, God has created us, not just created us, but he created us in Jesus Christ so that we may do the good works of God. The good works that God has prepared for us beforehand. Now, what is important here, we need to understand that Paul here is not saying to the Ephesians that they were saved because of something good they did. But that they were saved. They were called into Christianity because they were called to do good works that God has prepared for us to do. So even today, that mandate still remains that God has created us in Jesus Christ because there are some good works that God has prepared for us so that we might do those works. Now the question that many people might have this morning is that why does the Bible encourage us to do good works? Because it is normal to every human being that many people when we do things, we want to know why should we do that. The question is why does the Bible encourage Christians who are created by God in Jesus Christ to do good works, to continue doing good works. When you read the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse number 9, the Bible says we should not go weary in doing good because we will reap in the right time of the harvest. I think that is what needs to motivate us because there is a promise in this verse that we should not get tired, we should not get weary. Let me tell you the problem of doing good. The problem of doing good is sometimes we get tired when people don't compliment us. Sometimes we get tired when we don't see the physical results of what we are doing. But let me tell you something. The Bible put emphasis that in the right time, when the right time comes, we will live in the time of harvest. So we should not get weary all the time in doing good things. Why? Because our labor in Christ is not in vain. I think that is what Paul encourages the church in Corinth. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses number 58, after encouraging them to stand fast, after encouraging them not to move away, he said, knowing that your labor in Christ is not in vain. And I think that is what is very much important. But the important fact that I want to present before the church this morning it is that we should not just do good things because we are going to reap at the end of at the day of harvest. Because sometimes when we work because we're expecting results, if we don't get what we are expecting, then we become weary. Then we tend to give up because we work based on the results. We should never take for granted the good works that we do for others. The good works that we do for the church. Regardless of how small they seem to be. Because sometimes people are encouraged of doing good things when those things are regarded as great things. But each and everything that we do, that which is good, we should not get well on it. Even if the result seems to be so small compared to other things. The results and the benefits of the good things that we do, it is true indeed that should be our motivation. But that is not good enough. Because we need something that will influence us in terms of doing that thing. So that when we are motivated to do good things, we have an influencer behind us. Because some people are influenced by the results. When they are doing things and they don't see the results, they go away. We should not be influenced by the results, but we should be motivated by the results. Yes. If I am trying to help someone from drowning and I fail, I should not go away because my faith.
coming here does not mean that I did not do something good. It is good because I am influenced by the good idea of wanting to save someone, whether I failed or I did not fail. But the point is behind this love. You know, sometimes we do good things to an extent that they become our normal way of living. That you don't struggle to do good things as a Christian. You know, I, 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 I know myself. You know, and sometimes I'm a good father to an extent that I even forget it is Father's Day. Because it has become my daily living prayer. And when we are Christians and we are used to do good things, we even forget some other things. Because we are used to do those things. To us, they are a normal way of living. Because that is what we have been created for in Jesus Christ. To do good works. The good works cannot save us. But the Bible says we are all going to be judged based on what we did. When we are in this world, when we are in the flesh, whether be good, whether be bad, but we are going to live what we sow. I'm wondering that when God comes, I will be pleased with what will be presented to me. Because now we need to understand that God, when he's in heaven, is watching over us. And let me ask you this question. If they can say there is a video that we have recorded you behind the scenes since you became a Christian, all the things that we, you did, and now we want to pay it before the church. Would you, what, what are you going to say? No, 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 please. Let me just have a clip of it first. <laughs> or we'll say, ah, no, let, 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 let us watch it. But we need to understand that we are created to do good things. That is the encouragement that the, the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verses number uh, 21. It says that we, we, we are equipped by God, and God equipped us in every good thing. You know why? So that we may be able to do His will, so that we may be able to uphold His commandment. That is what you and I have been created for. That is what you and I have been designed for. And this morning I want to encourage you that we should not get weary in doing good things. Why? Because we are going to reap at the time of harvest. Everything that we do, God is watching in heaven. That is why in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, when you read uh, uh, verses number 24, the Bible says, and let us consider how we may spare one another on towards love and good works. This is an encouragement that whatever opportunity as Christians that we, we, we have, we must try to do what is good. We must try to do good works because that is what God has created us for. And he says we do that in respect of love and in respect of doing the good works that God has created in us. And that is the benefit of being a Christian, that we have the opportunity of doing something that is good. Sometimes I'm sad when I see other people who are doing good works, but they are not in Christ. And I'm, asked, I'm asking myself that if I am in Christ, am I doing all those good things? We are having this opportunity to do the good things that will promote the love that is around us. That is why when we read Hebrews chapter 10, verses number 23, the Bible encourages us that we should stand fast in the hope that we have been given because the one who has promised us is very much faithful. And it goes to verses number 25 because some people have neglected their responsibility of attending a, a, a church assembly. Sometimes people get tired. Sometimes people get away of doing good things. But let me tell you something. There is a time when we are going to read, as long as we are playing our heart in what God has called us for. I still remain retain this fact that God did not choose me to be the member of the Church of Christ because he wanted to increase the number. But because there is a certain specific purpose that he wants to carry it out through me. And now I'm an asset. I'm an investor. I remember when God spoke to Ananias to go and speak to Saul, Paul, when he was Saul. And Ananias refused. But listen to what God says. He says that because this man, I have chosen him to be a vessel that will carry on my name. We have that privilege, brothers and sisters, of carrying the name of Jesus Christ. We have seen politicians who are proud of their positions and only to find out they are telling lies. But we as Christians, we are the vessels, we are the instruments that carry 
is the most precious name that saves people. And that can only be presented with our good works. Let me tell you something in Limpopo, where we are coming from. We don't have this flashing toilets where you just get around the corner and say, You have to go out. So, because it is dangerous going out, we, we, we have some other sources that we use, you know? Yeah. But there are some, 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 some things which are specifically designed for that purpose. If you come into my house and I take that thing out, and you can see my wife is cooking in the kitchen, and the food smells good. And now when times dish up comes, and I use that vessel to dish up, are you going to eat? What is wrong? Because the food smells nice. What is wrong? The problem is what? The vessel. So now it, it is possible that people don't have the problem with the word of God that we are having. It is well cooked because it is cooked by God himself. But the problem is the vessel. But now if you project good words, then it is easier for people to understand and listen to what you are saying. Concerning Jesus Christ. So that is why I'm saying in verse number 25, he starts to encourage them because some now have lost the interest of coming to church, of joining in the assembly. Let me put this to your attention, that when you come to church on Sunday, it is not only that you are living up to the commandment of Jesus Christ that we have been commanded to do so. But let me tell you something. There are some people who are encouraged by just the prayer. There are people who are encouraged by your singing, how you sing. There are people who are encouraged by the sermon you present. I hope it does. There are some people, there are some people who are just encouraged by your presence, by just seeing you. You know, when I was still at school, there are some children who will bully us, especially at the end of the year when we are going to take reports. They, they, they want to be our parents. They want us to show them uh, their, our reports. You know? but, but one day there was this friend who stood up against the bully person and he was so much confident. And after that, we asked him, why? Why, why were you so courageous? Why were you so strong? He said, no, 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 no. It is not because I'm strong. It is not because I can fight him, but it is because of who I was heavy. Because when we went to take reports, brother, let me tell you something, sister, we go with our brother. So we don't have power, but who we are heavy. Sometimes I'm saying that our abilities, it is not about the resources that we are having, but it is about who we are having. Yeah. Remember what David said, you come to me with all full arms, we come, you come to me with all training, but I come to you with the word of God. And he says that the horses are prepared for the day of fight, the day of battle, but victory is of who? Is of the Lord. Yeah. The benefit of being married. Thank you. <laughs> so now, as we continue towards the end now, I want us to understand that it's very much important to make use of every opportunity that we are having so that we may live up to what God desired out of us. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Every parent will be proud seeing your child on the TV there, on the national TV, that he's done something great. And you will call and say, that's my son, that's my daughter. That's how God is. When he is in heaven, he's looking at us, doing great things. I'm sure he's like telling the devil, do you see what Chris is doing down there? You know? So we need to use whatever opportunity. So now what is important is, as we start to do good works, I want you to take note of the following. But because before I go to that, I want you to recall on what James chapter 4 verse number 17 says. It says that to who? Who knows what is good? and do it not, to him it is a sin. Sometimes we want to preserve ourselves, we want to save ourselves, because we don't want to, to do sin. But we forget that failure to do good is by default a sin. So now as we continue, and as we strive to do what is good, we should remember the following, that in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and verses number 2, we are encouraged, we are motivated, we are saying that if any brother of us, if any sister of us is in the erring point, we who are of spirit, we must bring him or her back with a humble spirit, with a soft spirit. That is why verses number 2 says, we must learn to carry each other's burdens. By that, by so doing, we will be 
doing God's law. We will be heading to God's law. We should understand that we are one big family. I, will all, I always tell people that Christianity is more of a coin. The value of a coin relies on it being printed on both sides. The two sides. The value of a coin is based on the fact that it is printed on both sides. If it is printed only on one side, it, do, it is useless. I can't even pick it up. So what, 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 what am I trying to say? I am trying to say I am nothing without you. And hopefully so you are nothing without me. That's what the Bible says, two are better than one. Because one, one fall, the one will carry, will carry them up. So that's why it's very much important that we should be there when most of our brothers need us. I remember in John chapter 11, verses number 19, after Lazarus passed on, the Bible says many of the Jews were there. Why? Why many of the Jews went to Martha and Mary? The Bible says to comfort them in their loss. How many of us have been bedridden? How many of us have lost someone we love through death? A phone call is very much important to say, how are you doing? A text message is very much important to say, how are you doing? But there is nothing that defeats the presence of a Christian. You know, I lost my younger sister. I lost my father. And I lost my brother. But every time when I see Christians getting through the gate of my home, I was more than comforted. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm trying to say. In pursuing of doing good things, let us be there for our brothers and sisters who need us in their bad time, in their bad spaces. If you can, if you can manage to do that, it will be great achievement to God. Because we don't expect God physically to come here and do all those things. But He can wait for us to do all those things. That is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when we read verses number 26, it says that when one part of the body is in pain, all the bodies come together and share the pain. When one part of the body is celebrating, all parts of the body celebrate with that part. Let me tell you something, the collaboration of the part of the bodies are very much important because a person can lose a bit high because he has injured in the leg. There's nothing wrong with the epitaph system, but because the other part of the body is not feeling well, everything seems not to go well in the body. And when we are there, when we are there to comfort, when we are there to encourage, our brothers and sisters become lifted. And that is the good work that people see. And that is the good work that people will come and talk about. When our brothers and sisters are in pain, when our brothers and sisters have reached the country set, when our brothers and sisters are in darkness, when they are in empty and we are there to fill the space, even people who are not the members of the Church of Christ will say, these are the messengers of God because they are in pursuit of good works, of good deeds. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses, chapter 1, verse number 4, it says that when other people are in pain, the Bible says God starts by comforting us. Why? According to this verse, why does God start by comforting us? He says that so that we may comfort all those who are in pain through the comforts that we are given by himself, God, to us. So it is very much important, brothers and sisters, that in doing all good things, we should note these two points, which I'm emphasizing this morning, that let us help our brothers and sisters who are in the end. Let us be there to our brothers and sisters who need us. And I can tell you, that even this morning, there are some Christians today who need other people to encourage them. We have families, we have wives, we have husbands, we have children, we are working, we encounter problems each and every day. There are times when we need a shoulder to cry on. There are times when we need someone to tell us, to remind us that right on, brother, right on, sister, everything one day will be fine. And we take courage on the support that we are given by other Christians. In conclusion, all of these things that I've mentioned, all of these things that the church here at Hilltop is striving in good, in doing all good things, they can be attainable. 
the only way that we can attain them is if we think for one another. But if we don't, if I'm thinking for myself only, we cannot achieve anything. If I go through that door and I don't care whether it is still open or not, I don't care about those who come uh, behind me, then there is nothing that I can attain. Because I want to remind you that every time when God opened this door through baptism, the devil also opened this one. But if we care for one another, it is very much important that we know that we are going to achieve all that God has given us. If we go to the book of uh, Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses number 4, uh, the Bible says, each of you should not look only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. If we are to do good things, let us also look at the interest of other Christians. That it is not enough that I have what I have if my brother, if my sister has nothing. It is not impossible. It might have challenges, but it is not impossible to do good things. That is what God has created me and you for. It is just that we need time to find out what is it that God has created me for. One day, one lecture, realized that in this class, the students do not have the spirit of team work. You know when you, when you are students, uh, and you have that spirit in yourself that I want to be greater than others. Even when you find a good method of study, you don't want to share with others. When you look, you, you are happy when others get 40s and you, you run with 90s. You are not a, team, a good team work. You understand what I'm saying? Because remember, even though we are different students, but we are all working for the same cause, for the common cause. We are different Christians here, right? But we, we are all working for the, for the common cause. Therefore, if I find something better that encourages in Christianity, that uplift the spirit, I can share it with other people. And now, the lecture came and said, you know, I realized that there is a problem. This is everyone here, what, what is best for him or for her. Now, what he did is that he took some, uh, some, 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 some uh, 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 empty uh, 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 box of witches. And inside those boxes, he put some, some names, Eddie, Chris, Paul, Haru, Shanti, and all those things. You know, and, 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 and he throws those boxes inside a wall and said, each and every person, go and seek for your name. You know, one will go and open the, the box and find out, no, this is who I'm Chris. And that, that one will, every time when one opens that box of magic and he finds that this is not my name, he doesn't even care where he throws that box. <laughs> it took them hours for all of them completely finding their names. And second time he came and said, go back in the class and open each and every box. Whatever name that you find there, if it is not yours, take it to the owner. It took them less than five minutes. When we work together and when we do good, we are bound to do great things. May the church, may the Lord bless the reading of the soul.